Have you ever felt like you're fighting an uphill battle, but the enemy is you? You're not alone. Many of us struggle with self-sabotage, those pesky habits and thoughts that hold us back from reaching our true potential. It's like we're constantly getting in our own way, tripping over our own feet on the path to success and happiness. But what if I told you there's a way to stop this cycle? A way to become your own best friend instead of your worst enemy. Today, we're diving into the wisdom of Louise Hay, a woman who dedicated her life to helping people overcome these very challenges. Louise Hay once said, the thoughts we choose to think are the tools we use to paint the canvas of our lives. This simple yet profound statement is at the heart of her teachings. It suggests that we have more control over our lives than we often realize. Think about it. How often do you catch yourself thinking negatively about your abilities, your looks, or your chances of success? These thoughts aren't just passing clouds in your mind. They're the brush strokes that shape your reality. Imagine you're standing in front of a mirror. What do you see? Is it a person full of potential and worthy of love? Or someone who's never quite good enough? The truth is, the reflection you see is often colored by your inner beliefs. If you constantly tell yourself you're not smart enough to get that promotion, Guess what? You might subconsciously act in ways that make that belief come true. It's like you're sabotaging yourself before you even begin. But here's the good news. Just as negative thoughts can hold us back, positive ones can propel us forward. Louise Hay's work is all about harnessing this power. She believed that by changing our thoughts, we could change our lives. It's not about ignoring problems or pretending everything is perfect. Instead, it's about approaching life's challenges with a mindset that empowers rather than defeats us. Now you might be wondering, who exactly is Louise Hay and why should we listen to her? Well, Louise wasn't just another self-help guru spouting feel-good phrases. Her journey is a testament to the power of her teachings. Born in 1926, Louise faced numerous hardships early in life, including abuse and poverty. She could have let these experiences define her, to convince her that she was a victim of circumstance. Instead, she chose a different path. Louise's breakthrough came when she discovered the connection between her negative thoughts and her physical and emotional well-being. She realized that many of her problems stemmed from a deep-seated belief that she wasn't worthy of love and success. Sound familiar? Many of us carry similar beliefs without even realizing it. What sets Louise apart is that she didn't just recognize this pattern. She actively worked to change it. She developed a system of positive affirmations and self-love practices that not only transformed her own life, but has since helped millions of people around the world. Her book, You Can Heal Your Life, has sold over 50 million copies worldwide, touching lives across cultures and generations. Louise's teachings aren't about ignoring life's problems or pretending everything is perfect. Instead, they're about facing our challenges head on but with a mindset of self-compassion and possibility. She showed us that we have the power to rewrite our internal narratives, to stop being our own worst enemies and start being our biggest supporters. One of Louise Hay's most powerful concepts is what we might call the mirror principle. This isn't about your physical reflection, but rather how your inner world reflects in your outer experiences. Louise often said, what you think about yourself becomes the truth for you. In other words, your thoughts and beliefs act like a mirror, reflecting back to you in the form of your life experiences. Let's break this down with a simple example. 
Imagine you have a big presentation coming up at work. If you constantly think, I'm terrible at public speaking, I'm going to mess this up, how do you think you'll perform? Chances are, your nervousness will show you might stumble over your words and your presentation probably won't go as well as it could. Your negative thoughts have created a self-fulfilling prophecy. Now flip that scenario. What if instead you told yourself, I've prepared well and I have valuable information to share? You'd likely feel more confident, speak more clearly, and give a much better presentation. Same person, same presentation, but a completely different outcome, all because of a change in your thoughts. This mirror principle applies to all areas of our lives. If you believe you're unlovable, you might subconsciously push away people who try to get close to you. If you think you're bad with money, you might make poor financial decisions that reinforce that belief. It's like you're constantly sending messages to the universe, and the universe is simply reflecting those messages back to you. But here's the exciting part. If negative thoughts can create negative experiences, positive thoughts can create positive ones. This doesn't mean that thinking happy thoughts will magically solve all your problems. Life will still have its challenges. But by changing your internal dialogue, you change how you approach these challenges. You stop getting in your own way and start paving your own path to success. Louise Hay's mirror principle isn't about denial or fake positivity. It's about recognizing the immense power of our thoughts and using that power consciously. It's about catching those self-sabotaging thoughts and asking yourself, is this really true? Is this thought helping me or holding me back? Remember, the goal isn't to never have a negative thought again. That's not realistic. The goal is to become aware of your thoughts, to recognize when you're being unnecessarily harsh with yourself, and to consciously choose more empowering beliefs. It's about treating yourself with the same kindness and understanding you'd offer a good friend. As you go through your day, try to notice your thoughts. Are they mostly critical or supportive? Do they empower you or hold you back? Just this awareness can be the first step in stopping the cycle of self-sabotage. You might be surprised at how often you get in your own way without even realizing it. The mirror principle teaches us that our internal world shapes our external reality. By changing our thoughts, we can change our lives. It's simple, but it's not always easy. It takes practice and patience. But as Louise Hay proved through her own life and the lives of millions she's helped, it's a practice that can truly transform your world. So the next time you catch yourself thinking, I can't do this, or I'm not good enough, pause for a moment. Take a deep breath and try replacing that thought with something more supportive. It might feel strange at first, even a bit fake. But remember, you're not lying to yourself. You're choosing to focus on your potential rather than your limitations. You're choosing to be your own cheerleader instead of your own critic. This is the first step in stopping getting in your own way. It's about recognizing that you have the power to shape your reality through your thoughts. It's about understanding that the biggest obstacle to your success and happiness isn't the world around you. It's the limiting beliefs you hold about yourself. As we continue to explore Louise Hay's teachings, Keep this mirror principle in mind. It's the foundation upon which we can build a more positive, empowering relationship with ourselves. And when we stop being our own worst enemies, we open up a world of possibilities we might never have imagined before. Let's face it, we're all experts at tripping ourselves up. 
Louise Hay spent years studying the ways people sabotage their own happiness and success. She found that these self-defeating behaviors often stem from deep-rooted beliefs we hold about ourselves. Let's look at some of the most common ways we get in our own way. First up is negative self-talk. You know that little voice in your head that's always quick to point out your flaws and mistakes? That's negative self-talk in action. It's like having a mean critic living rent-free in your mind, constantly putting you down. You're not smart enough, it might whisper when you're facing a challenge at work. Or, you'll never find love when you're feeling lonely. This constant stream of negativity can wear you down over time, making you less likely to take risks or pursue your dreams. Another common form of self-sabotage is procrastination. We've all been there, putting off important tasks until the last minute, or worse, never getting around to them at all. Louise Hay believed that procrastination often stems from a fear of failure or a belief that we're not capable of success. It's easier to say, I didn't have time, than to face the possibility that we might not be good enough. But by constantly putting things off, we rob ourselves of the chance to grow and achieve our goals. Fear of success is another sneaky way we get in our own way. It might sound strange. After all, who doesn't want to be successful? But success often brings change, and change can be scary. You might worry about the increased responsibilities that come with success, or fear that you won't be able to maintain your achievements. This fear can lead you to subconsciously sabotage your own efforts, keeping you stuck in your comfort zone. Lastly, Louise Hay often talked about the danger of comparing ourselves to others. In today's world of social media, it's all too easy to fall into the comparison trap. We see carefully curated glimpses of other people's lives and achievements, and suddenly our own progress seems inadequate. This constant comparison can lead to feelings of unworthiness and discouragement making us less likely to pursue our own unique path to success. These self-sabotaging behaviors might seem different on the surface, but they all stem from the same root, negative beliefs about ourselves and our place in the world. The good news is, once we recognize these patterns, we can start to change them. And that's where Louise Hay's teachings on affirmations come in. If negative self-talk is like a critic living in your mind, then positive affirmations are like inviting a supportive friend to take up residence there instead. Louise Hay was a big believer in the power of affirmations. Positive statements that we repeat to ourselves to change our thoughts and ultimately our lives. Now, you might be thinking, how can simply saying nice things to myself make a difference? Well, it's all about rewiring your brain. When we constantly think negative thoughts, we're strengthening those neural pathways in our brains. It becomes our default mode of thinking. Affirmations work by creating new positive pathways. It's like carving out a new path in a forest. The more you use it, the clearer and easier to follow it becomes. Louise Hay developed countless affirmations over her career, but some of her most powerful ones are deceptively simple. I love and approve of myself is a classic Louise Hay affirmation. It directly counters the feelings of unworthiness that are at the root of so much self-sabotage. Another powerful one is, I am willing to change and grow. This affirmation acknowledges that change can be scary, but it also affirms our ability to evolve and improve. One of my personal favorites is, I am worthy of love and respect. So many of us struggle with feeling undeserving of love, whether from others or ourselves. 
This affirmation reminds us that worthiness isn't something we need to earn. It's our birthright. But here's the thing about affirmations. They're not magic spells. You can't just say them once and expect your life to transform overnight. They're more like exercise for your mind. Just as you need to consistently work out to build physical strength, you need to consistently practice affirmations to build mental and emotional strength. It's also important to choose affirmations that resonate with you. If an affirmation feels too far from your current beliefs, your mind might reject it outright. Start with something that feels challenging, but not impossible to believe. As you get more comfortable with the practice, you can gradually introduce more ambitious affirmations. Now that we understand the power of affirmations, let's roll up our sleeves and create some of our own. Louise Hay always emphasized the importance of personalizing affirmations to fit your specific needs and goals. This exercise will help you craft affirmations that really speak to you. First, take a moment to think about an area of your life where you often get in your own way. Maybe it's in your career, your relationships, or your personal growth. What negative thoughts or beliefs do you have about this area? Write them down. Don't judge these thoughts. Just acknowledge them. Next, for each negative thought, try to come up with a positive counterstatement. For example, if your negative thought is, I'm not smart enough to get that promotion, your positive affirmation could be, I am capable and competent in my work. Remember, the goal isn't to completely believe these statements right away. It's to open yourself up to new possibilities. When crafting your affirmations, keep a few guidelines in mind. Use present tense, as if what you're affirming is already true. Make them positive, instead of, I will not fail, try, I succeed in my endeavors. Keep them short and simple, so they're easy to remember and repeat. Once you have your affirmations, it's time to put them into practice. Louise Hay recommended saying affirmations in front of a mirror. This might feel awkward at first, but it's a powerful way to connect with yourself. Look into your own eyes as you say your affirmations. Speak them with conviction, even if you don't fully believe them yet. Try to practice your affirmations at least twice a day, once in the morning to set a positive tone for your day, and once at night to reinforce the positive messages. You can also write them down and place them where you'll see them often, like on your bathroom mirror or as a screensaver on your phone. Remember, the key to making affirmations work is consistency and patience. You might not see changes overnight, but over time, you'll likely notice a shift in your thoughts and attitudes. You might find yourself feeling more confident, more open to opportunities, and less likely to engage in self-sabotaging behaviors. As you practice, pay attention to how you feel. If an affirmation doesn't resonate with you after a while, don't be afraid to adjust it or try a new one. This is your journey, and you have the power to shape it. Louise Hay often said, the point of power is always in the present moment. By practicing affirmations, you're harnessing that power. You're actively choosing to stop getting in your own way and start supporting yourself instead. It's a simple practice, but it has the potential to transform your life from the inside out. Overcoming negative self-talk. We've all been there that moment when we catch ourselves in a spiral of negative thoughts. I'm not good enough. I'll never succeed. Why even bother trying? This negative self-talk is like a broken record playing in our minds, and it's one of the biggest ways we get in our own way. 
Louise Hay recognized this pattern as a major obstacle to personal growth and happiness. Negative self-talk isn't just unpleasant, it can have real consequences on our lives. It can stop us from taking risks, pursuing our dreams, or even enjoying our daily lives. It's like we're carrying around our own personal critic, always ready to point out our flaws and shortcomings. But here's the thing, this inner critic isn't telling the truth. It's often repeating old messages we've internalized from childhood, past experiences, or societal expectations. The good news is, we have the power to change this inner dialogue. Louise Hay developed a simple but powerful method for turning negative thoughts into positive ones. The first step is awareness. Start paying attention to your thoughts. When you catch yourself thinking something negative, pause. Take a deep breath. Now, here's the crucial part. Don't judge yourself for having the negative thought. Remember, the goal isn't to never have a negative thought again. That's not realistic. The goal is to change how we respond to these thoughts. Once you've identified a negative thought, the next step is to question it. Is it really true? Where did this belief come from? Often, when we shine a light on these thoughts, we realize they're based on outdated or false information. The final step is to replace the negative thought with a positive one. This is where affirmations come in handy. For example, if you catch yourself thinking, I'm not smart enough, you could replace it with, I am constantly learning and growing. If the negative thought is, I'll never find love, try replacing it with, I am worthy of love and open to receiving it. This process takes practice. At first, it might feel forced or fake. That's okay. Keep at it. Over time, you'll find it becomes more natural. You're essentially retraining your brain, creating new neural pathways. It's like learning a new language. At first, it feels awkward and difficult, but with practice, it becomes second nature. At the heart of Louise Hay's teachings is the concept of self-love. She believed that many of our problems stem from a lack of self-love and self-acceptance. Think about it. How often do you criticize yourself? How often do you put your own needs last? How often do you speak to yourself in ways you'd never speak to a friend? Self-love isn't about being narcissistic or selfish. It's about treating yourself with the same kindness and respect you'd offer to someone you care about. It's about recognizing your own worth and taking care of your physical, emotional, and spiritual needs. Louise Hay often said, you've been criticizing yourself for years and it hasn't worked. Try approving of yourself and see what happens. This simple shift in perspective can be transformative. When we love and accept ourselves, we're less likely to engage in self-sabotaging behaviors. We're more likely to pursue our goals, set healthy boundaries, and enjoy our lives. So how do we cultivate self-love? Louise Hay suggested several practices. One is mirror work. This involves looking at yourself in the mirror each day and saying something kind to yourself. It might feel awkward at first, but stick with it. Another practice is to treat yourself with the same compassion you'd offer a small child. Would you berate a child for making a mistake? Probably not. So why do it to yourself? Self-care is another important aspect of self-love. This doesn't have to mean expensive spa days, although those are nice. It can be as simple as taking a relaxing bath, going for a walk in nature, or saying no to commitments that drain you. The key is to make time for activities that nourish your body, mind, and spirit. Remember, self-love is a practice, not a destination. There will be days when it's easier 
and days when it's harder. The important thing is to keep at it. As you cultivate self-love, you'll likely find that you're less likely to get in your own way. You'll be more resilient in the face of challenges and more open to life's opportunities. The power of Louise Hay's teachings isn't just theoretical. It's been proven in the lives of countless individuals around the world. Let's look at a couple of real life success stories to see how these principles can play out in practice. Take Sarah, for example. Sarah had always struggled with low self-esteem and a fear of public speaking. This held her back in her career as she often avoided opportunities that required her to present to groups. After discovering Louise Hay's work, Sarah began practicing daily affirmations. She'd look in the mirror each morning and say, I am confident and articulate. My voice deserves to be heard. At first, Sarah felt silly doing this, but she stuck with it. She also started questioning her negative self-talk. When the thought, I'll mess up if I speak in public came up, she'd challenge it. Is that really true? Haven't I succeeded in other challenging situations before? Over time, Sarah noticed a change. She felt more confident in meetings. She volunteered to lead a small presentation, and it went well. This success boosted her confidence further. Within a year, Sarah had overcome her fear of public speaking and had taken on a leadership role in her company. By stopping the cycle of negative self-talk and cultivating self-love, Sarah had stopped getting in her own way. Then there's Michael. Michael had always dreamed of starting his own business, but he constantly procrastinated on taking the first steps. He'd tell himself, I'm not ready yet, or what if I fail? After attending a workshop based on Louise Hay's teachings, Michael realized he was sabotaging himself out of fear. Michael started using the affirmation, I am capable of creating a successful business. I take action towards my goals every day. He also practiced self-love by acknowledging his achievements no matter how small. Each time he completed a task related to his business plan, he'd take a moment to appreciate his progress. Gradually, Michael's fear began to lessen. He started taking concrete steps towards his goal. He created a business plan, networked with other entrepreneurs, and eventually launched his company. Today, Michael runs a successful small business. He credits Louise Hay's teachings with giving him the tools to overcome his self-sabotaging habits and pursue his dreams. These stories show that change is possible. By applying Louise Hay's principles of positive thinking, self-love, and overcoming negative self-talk, both Sarah and Michael were able to stop getting in their own way and achieve goals they once thought were out of reach. As we wrap up our journey through Louise Hay's teachings, let's take a moment to reflect on what we've learned. We started by recognizing how often we get in our own way through negative self-talk, procrastination, fear of success, and constant comparison to others. We explored the power of our thoughts and how they shape our reality. The mirror principle that shows us how our inner world reflects in our outer experiences. We delved into the transformative power of positive affirmations learning how to create and use them effectively. We practiced overcoming negative self-talk, replacing those harmful thoughts with empowering ones. And we explored the crucial importance of self-love, understanding that when we treat ourselves with kindness and respect, we're less likely to engage in self-sabotaging behaviors. Through real-life success stories, we saw how these principles can play out in practice, leading to significant positive changes in people's lives. Whether it's overcoming a fear of public speaking, 
or finally pursuing a long-held dream, Louise Hay's teachings have helped countless individuals stop getting in their own way and start living more fulfilling lives. Remember, this journey of self-improvement isn't about reaching a perfect end state. It's about progress, not perfection. There will be days when old habits creep back in, when negative thoughts seem louder than positive ones. That's okay. The key is to keep practicing, to be patient with yourself, and to always come back to self-love. As Louise Hay often said, you have the power to heal your life, and you need to know that. By becoming aware of the ways you get in your own way, by choosing more empowering thoughts, by practicing self-love, you're taking that power back. You're choosing to be your own ally instead of your own enemy. So as you move forward from here, carry these teachings with you. Practice your affirmations. Challenge your negative self-talk. Treat yourself with kindness. And most importantly, believe in your own potential for growth and change. You have everything you need within you to stop getting in your own way and start creating the life you desire. Remember, every moment is a new opportunity to choose differently, to think differently, to be different. As you embrace this power, you may find that the biggest obstacle in your life, yourself, becomes your greatest ally. And that truly is the essence of Louise Hay's transformative message.